Hi guys, welcome to this video from SPSS Assassin on how to complete two-way mixed anovas. So we can use these tests when we have experimental designs that are comprised of both between and within participant aspects. So let's imagine for some reason we're interested in the eating habits of monkeys. So we could look at do male monkeys eat more than female monkeys? Do they prefer red fruits over yellow fruits? So in this case our between participants variable is going to be sex, so that's male or female, but we're going to give both of those groups uh, two types of fruits. We've got red and yellow, so that's the within participants variable. So to set this up, let's go to variable view, and we'll type in sex into this top column, then use the values column to indicate that there are two levels. So we can just use a zero to stand for male, and we can use a 1 to stand for females. And so for with uh, between participant variables, we need to use this values column to indicate what the different levels of that variable are. But for within participant variables, we've got to use separate cells to indicate what those levels are. So we'll type red here and yellow here. Finally, we'll just use the measures column to indicate that sex is a nominal variable, also known as categorical variable, meaning that you belong to one category or another. And we can indicate that red uh, is a scale variable and yellow is also a scale, scale variable, so we're interested in the, the number of fruits that uh, are, are eaten. Okay, so we've set that up, so we can go now to data view, and we can see that sex, red, and yellow have appeared at the top of these columns. So if we look at this table, there are 10 males here, and there are, there are 10 females. So we need to tell SPSS how many of each sex we have. So we'll use the numbers that we assigned to those sexes on the previous screen. So we'll enter uh, 10 zeros here, and 10 ones here. And now we just need to copy and paste the data from this table into SPSS. So this is the number of red fruit seasoned by males, so obviously that goes into the red column next to males. This is the number of yellow fruit eaten by males. Uh, this is the number of red fruits eaten by females. And this is the number of yellow fruits eaten by females. Okay, so we now have all the data set up, so we're ready to run the analysis. So let's go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. And we need to give a name to our fruit variable, so let's call it fruit color. So we'll type fruits underscore, because we can't use a space, color. And we need to specify that that has two levels, red and yellow. So two, we'll put a two there, click add, then define. Then we'll simply transfer red next to this one, and transfer yellow next to this two, and then put the sex variable into the between subjects factors box. Before running the analysis, we'll go to options and we'll just get SPSS to give us some means for the two different variables. We'll also take descriptive statistics and we'll ask it to do homogeneity tests. So there's a couple of things to check before looking at the results of the ANOVA when you get the output. Um, so this test here is automatically run when you do this analysis. Um, it basically tests one of the assumptions that needs to be met in order for the results of the ANOVA to be valid. So um, we want the sig value to be non-significant. So this is 0.111, so that's obviously higher than 0.05, so we're okay. Likewise, we want the same thing to be true when we look at the um, homogeneity tests, so the Levine's test of equality of error variances, we want these sig values to be above 0 0.05. Clearly both of them are, so that's fine. So once we've established that, that the, that the assumptions of the ANOVA have been met, we can uh, take a look at this test of with, within subjects effects table. So if you look at the fruit color section here, we can see that the sig value is above 0 
and so there wasn't a main effect of fruit colour. So overall, red fruit wasn't more popular than yellow fruit or vice versa. However, if we look at the tests of between subjects effects table, we can see that there was a significant main effect of sex because of course this number is below 0 0.05. And if we go back to this table again, we can see that there was an interaction between fruit color and sex indicated by this significance value. Okay, so how do we report these results? So let's take a look at an example. So it's conventional to start off by saying why you did the test, so that's what this first sentence does. And then we just describe whether there were or there were not significant main effects. So we've started by saying that there was not a significant main effect of fruit color. So let's look, take a look at where we get those uh, numbers from. So we're going back to this um, tests of within subjects effects table, and we're looking at fruit color. So the p-value here is obviously in the sig, sig uh, column here, so 0 0.341. We've got 0 0.96 as the f value, so that's been rounded from 0 0.955, and so it's conventional to round most statistics to two decimal places in accordance with APA guidelines. And we've got degrees of freedom, so we've got a 1 here and we've got an 18 here. And so that's also shown here as well. So we do the same thing for the uh, between subjects effects. So we've written uh, that the p-value is less than 0 0.001. And we do that because the sig value that SPSS shows us is 0 0.000. So all that we know is that the actual value is something below 0 0.001. And again, we can see, uh, actually, this is slightly off. So this should be 30.68. Okay, so that's because we've rounded this number from 30.675 to 30.68. And again, we've got the degrees of freedom. We've got the 1 and the 18. And we've got the 1 and the 18 here as well. We've reported both of the main effects, so now we just need to report the interaction effects between those two variables. So same thing again, we've got three zeros here, so we just report that as less than 0 0.001. We've got the same degrees of freedom, obviously, we've got a 1 and an 18. And we've got this F value, which is 31.78, which is what it is here as well. Um, so it's conventional if you get a significant interaction to follow that up with t-tests. So you might be interested in, for example, whether males eat more red fruits than females, or whether that difference is significant, um, or whether males eat more yellow fruits than females, or you might want to know whether males eat significantly more red fruits than yellow fruits, or whether females eat significantly more red fruits than yellow fruits. And so we can, we have an idea of whether there might be differences from looking at these means. So we can see that males overall eat 17 fruits per day versus 13 for females, and that there's not much difference between um, the different uh, color fruits eaten. So that's the red fruits and the yellow fruits. And we've also got some extra interesting descriptives here as well. So we can see that out of the red fruits, males ate more than females, but for the yellow fruits, there wasn't really much of a difference. So we can use t-tests to start investigating these differences. Um, but that's beyond the scope of the current video. So if you want to find out how to do that, take a look at our, our other videos on t-tests, and that will give you all you need to know about how to report everything associated with a two-way mixed turnover. Okay, thanks for watching.